Oh, hey, what's up guys? I'm KBHD here, and welcome to another video in the Tesla Model S P100D video series. This one is going to be about the Tesla Motors app. So I'm gonna be showing you, I mean, it's an LTE connected car. It's a tech product, there's a lot going on there. And there's some cool stuff that the app does right now. But I also wanna say that, of course, since this is a new Tesla video, this is being recorded on the front facing camera on the OnePlus 3T. And if, if I'm looking at this video quality right now, I'm just looking back and forth between the viewfinder and the camera, it looks pretty good. I mean, you got the little, the little bit of depth of field going on, the background's blurred out. Yeah, F2.0, looking pretty good. You'll also be able to see the new video from the back facing camera, which isn't really a new sensor, but there is some improved electronic image stabilization that you'll be able to see as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the app. So right off the bat, I do get to address the fact that this app will probably be getting a major update within the next month or so. Elon Musk has already tweeted, and he's, he's pretty much who announces all the new Tesla products. Uh, that there's going to be a major update, hopefully new UI, hopefully the new Android app gets material design. But this is what it looks like as of right now, and I'll give some suggestions for what I would like to see, but this is the way the app looks right now. You can see it looks really old iOS, so not a whole lot of uh, iOS 10 looks going on here, but this is what you get. So right off the bat, the main controls are over here on the side. You can put it in valet mode, and valet mode will actually just super limit the car's performance, so it won't be able to go super fast, super quickly, It'll limit you to 70 miles an hour, and essentially the car is just for valets at that point. So it restricts all your personal information in the dash, doesn't show your calendar events, and you need a pin code to turn that on or off. And there's also notifications, and you can turn notifications on, well, okay, that crashed, so that's a good start for the Tesla app. You can show notifications for things like charging, uh, when your charging's been interrupted, and other stuff like that. Apparently that crashes the app every time. Hey Elon, if you're watching this, this app update is long overdue. The fact that it's crashing on like basic functions like this is pretty weird. It actually works better on iOS than it does on Android, but anyway, I'll go ahead and show you the actually cool features. So down here at the bottom, which is easy to reach since it's a big phone, you get all the main controls for the phone. You get to see where the car is, whether it's locked or unlocked, how much range you have left, and that's actually gonna look like your car no matter what color, paint, or wheels you get, whether you get the sunroof, that'll all be there. And then you can see here, this is the control section where you'll have a vent roof button. That'll just uh, vent the sunroof a little bit. But side note, I think the vent roof function will be a lot less used because of the new software update, which monitors the interior temperature of the car and will automatically use climate control to keep the temperature relatively even. So if you're sitting on like hot asphalt, hot, 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 hot asphalt. If you're sitting on hot asphalt in the summer and the interior temperature of the car gets up to like 105 degrees, it'll automatically cool that down by either venting or using the air conditioning. So you probably won't need to use the vent roof function remotely as much. But then the bottom is kind of the more fun stuff. Again, you can lock the car if it's unlocked here. You can unlock it if it's locked. Yes, I wanna unlock my vehicle and bam, it's just unlocked behind me and the door handles came out. And then I can also honk the horn and flash the lights. So here's the lights. They're already on, but you can see they just glowed. And here's the horn. Jeez, that's loud. All right, so moving on down here at the bottom is your charge state. You can set your charge limit basically for Teslas and all their large lithium ion batteries. You don't want to charge them up to 100% every single time. That would be a max charge of 319 miles. I don't need to do that every single day. So unless I'm going on a road trip, I'm going to charge to about 85, 90%, which is about 280 miles and set that as my charge limit every night. And when I'm charged and plugging in, this will actually show me how much time I have left till I'm done charging. So if I'm supercharging, it'll show that status. If I'm charging in my garage, it'll do the same thing. And then over here on the right-hand side is your location. That's to literally show you on a map the location of your car in case you're trying to remember where you parked a couple blocks away or if you're curious about if someone stole your car or something, that'll be your location. And then climate is, like I mentioned earlier, you can literally change the inside temperature of the car. Right now, the intemper... <laughs> interior temperature is 69 degrees. If I turn on that interior temperature climate control, it'll go ahead and start to set it to whatever temperature I have here, so 72 degrees, and you'll see the interior graphic turn on. When this finishes loading, you'll see the air start to move into the car. And usually within a couple of minutes, you can fully heat the car, there it is starting, fully heat the car or fully cool down the car before you get into it. So a couple minutes before you leave a restaurant, if you know it's gonna be cold outside or hot outside, you can fix that in the car. So there's one button I haven't pressed yet, on the main home screen, and that's that summon button right there. Summon sounds pretty modern. Summon is like the most modern version of Ghost Riding the Whip that's possible right now. So right now with this car's current hardware, it'll be able to move straight forward and backward using the sensors all around the car to detect what's near it. And you can choose the summon distance to be, you know, 15 feet, 20, 25 feet. 
And that's useful for if you're in a garage and it's a really tight space. And this is kind of like my garage where I can hit the summon button, summon it backwards, and it will summon back out of my garage without touching any of the walls without me being in the car at all. So here's what a summon looks like on the current generation hardware Tesla Model S. It wakes up, it checks its surroundings, and then it just starts rolling forward until I tell it to stop or hit the key fob or walk up and press the door handle. Basically, it'll just keep going forward detecting what's around it. And uh, it could go all the way over there if I don't tell it to, but right now, I think that's about good. I'll have it stop and it'll go ahead and deploy the handles and it is ready to go. There's also something called home link which will allow me to connect the car to my garage door opener so I can reverse out of my garage with the reverse summon. And I guess the neat part of that is it'll also open and close the garage door behind it. So if I don't really wanna pull into my garage, I can walk up to the garage, summon it backwards and it'll open the door behind it come out of the garage and close the garage door when it's done summoning, which is pretty neat. And again, it'll kind of meet you there with the handles open. No one's in the car, no one's controlling it. That is the future. So that's pretty much it, guys. The app is super simple, super outdated in terms of the way it looks. And I'm looking forward to that update, not only in terms of functionality, but design and hopefully it doesn't crash anymore either. And then just basic other functions. Like I'd like to be able to see like superchargers nearby that are open in the app. I like to be able to have little things like, you know, when the trunk is open for like more than five minutes, if it'll like beep at me and tell me, hey, your trunk's been open for a while. Little things like that. Maybe being able to close the windows from inside when I know it's about to rain, that would all be a welcome improvement. But until then, that is it for the Tesla Model S P100D app. Until that app update comes, then I'll probably make a video about what's new about it. Until then, that's been it. Have a happy holiday if you're celebrating it. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.